Hello everyone and welcome to the Motorcycle Newsroom where I like to share the motorcycle news that I find interesting. If you like this video and you want to stay up to date on motorcycle related news, please remember to subscribe to the channel. Today I am going to talk about the new 2022 Yamaha XSR 900 and 10 things you should know about this retro race inspired motorcycle. 2022 XSR 900 is another example of a manufacturer taking a current engine platform and designing a different model around that platform. It's something we see a lot of these days. Honda recently announced the NT1100, which is based off the Africa Twin, but the NT1100 isn't the first model to be based off that platform. In 2021, Honda released an all-new Rebel 1100 Cruiser based off the same Africa Twin platform. Last year, Triumph announced the Trident 660 and most recently a Tiger Sport 660 off that same platform. Even Harley-Davidson is doing this to a degree by releasing the Sportster S, which is powered from the Revolution Max engine, which also powers the Pan America. The Sportster S is actually a slightly different design 1250cc engine than the Pan American, but most of those changes have to do with pistons, heads, intake, and exhaust. The rest of the motor is pretty much identical. The XSR 900 is a retro looking motorcycle that Yamaha classifies as being a sport heritage. It is built around the highly regarded MT-09 engine. If you're not a fan of naked class motorcycles or the MT-09, you may not know it, but it and the XSR 900 are powered by an inline triple. I have really been interested in testing out a triple ever since Triumph launched the more retro styled Trident 660 last year. Now I can add another retro styled triple to my list of bikes that I want to ride this summer. One chassis. XSR 900 has a new Delta Box style aluminum frame. There is quite a bit to discuss here. This is a key feature on the new XSR 900 and uses an all new compact lightweight aluminum frame that is one of the slimmest, lightest, and most compact designs in its class. Longitudinal, lateral, and torsional rigidity are all significantly increased, resulting in better straight line stability together without affecting agility. The head pipe is located lower than the previous model, providing increased feeling when cornering. This also allows for the handlebars to be mounted lower, giving the XSR 900 a more aggressive stance. The frame has sections at different thicknesses, so that the rigidity is designed to match the varying loads at any specific area without adding unnecessary weight to the frame. Wall thickness varies from 1.7 mm at its thinnest to 3.5 mm at its thickest. The previous model used a swing arm that pivots on the outside of the frame. The new bike uses a swing arm pivot that is held in between the outer chassis members and an improved design that is slimmer and more rigid than before. Straight line stability is also enhanced by the fitment of a box section aluminum swing arm that is 55 millimeters longer than the previous model to give the bike a total of 1495 millimeters wheelbase and an all new model specific subframe is featured as well. Two, engine. Next, let's look at the heart of the bike. The XSR 900 is updated with the larger engine with more torque and more power. It looks to be the same engine that we see in the most recent model of the MT-09. In 2022, this engine now produces 117 horsepower at 10,000 RPMs and 69 foot-pounds of torque at 7,000 RPM, partially due to the extra 43 cc's over the previous version. Virtually all of the major internal components have been redesigned and lightened, including the pistons, to make this one of the strongest performers in its class. Triples are famous for its strong, linear output with great torque through the middle range and allowing for great horsepower still at the top end. 3. Brakes This motorcycle has a new Brembo radial front master cylinder featuring a piston that moves parallel to the adjustable brake lever. The system provides accurate feedback for the dual 298mm front disc brakes and provides a huge amount of stopping power with a high level of controllability. On the rear, we have a 245mm disc. 4. Suspension Suspension features fully adjustable KYB USD front forks with a gold finish that I fit fits really well with this retro styling. A link type rear suspension features a forward inclined adjustable KYB shock virtually hidden from sight to give the rear a clean and sleek appearance. 5. Lighting In addition to a retro round LED headlight that provides a strong beam of light with a wide horizontal beam for excellent cornering vision at night, the new LED unit also allows the use of a much shorter housing. Emphasizing the historic racing image, the XSR 900 comes fitted with a hidden LED tail light located beneath the seat hump. LED flashes are equipped as well on this high-performance naked. 6. Wheels The aluminum 10-spoke spin-forged wheels are claimed to be Yamaha's lightest ever. 
When manufacturing the new XSR 900 wheels using a Yamaha exclusive spin forging technology, it has been possible to make the front rear wheel set 1.54 pounds lighter than before. This is a significant reduction in unsprung weight that allows for a more responsive suspension action for increased agility and stability. The lighter wheels decrease the inertia at the rear by 11% to make the new XSR 900 feel even more responsive when cornering and braking. 7. Tech Tech includes a 6-axis IMU that uses two sensors to make 3-axis velocity and 3-axis acceleration. This new unit is 50% smaller and 40% lighter than the original 2015 R1 design. And it sends data to the EC unit that is informing the three rider aids, which are lean sensitive traction control system, slide control system, and front wheel lift control system. There is also a new full color TFT display, which is modern, clear, and precise. The previous model's circular LCD unit was replaced with a much higher specification 3.5 inch full color TFT display with a bar type tachometer that changes color with rising RPM and also has a configurable display of secondary information. Rider mode selection is easily managed through the ergonomic handlebar switches. Cruise control is another new feature seen for the first time on the XSR 900. This easily programmable system makes long journeys even more enjoyable and has the added advantage of enabling the rider to observe speed limits without having to constantly look away from the road to check how fast their speedometer reads. 8. Clutch We get a lighter feeling ANS clutch to handle the XSR 900's markedly increased torque levels. ANS clutch is upgraded with different friction plates and the cam angle and the clutch is changed from 30 degrees to 33 degrees. These changes reduce the load of the clutch springs as a result and the clutch actually feels lighter at the lever even while the engine is delivering more torque at the lower engine speeds. 9. Gear New optimized gear ratios include a slightly higher ratio in first and second gear. These changes are designed to complement the increased moment of inertia of the crankshaft, the revised characteristics of the fuel injection system, and help provide balanced performance with a strong feeling of torque. Quick shifter. The XSR 900's quick shifter system takes the performance to another level by allowing the rider to do clutchless full throttle upshifts for optimum acceleration as well as performing clutchless downshifts improving stability and corner entry. The new XSR 900 is packed full of new features and improvements. I've only touched on the ones that I find most exciting and interesting. Let me know in the comments down below if any of these trip your trigger. Before we sign off, you may be wondering where is the pricing and the dates of availability? Well, pricing has not been announced yet, and the press release simply says, prices vary per region, so please contact the National Yamaha Distributor for full information, which is a bit of a bummer, but let's hope that the pricing stays reasonable after all these improvements. As for availability, well, deliveries will begin in late February 2022 for the European dealers. No word on when we can see this bike in the US still. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, and we'll see you guys in the next one.